and welcome in to another Monday Night Live stream. I am uh, sorry I missed last week, but you know things happen. Uh, I did rush around and make it to make it to the night stream, and uh, I'm here. So uh, anyway, I, let's uh, let's hope for a good one tonight. Uh, tonight's topic, amongst other things, is Nginx, Sunnel, and RTMPS. Uh, there's a use case for this, of course, and I'll explain that when we get there. Uh, but let's let's look at the chat real quick and see who's here. Um, so far, I only see Joe. Welcome in. I do not think Tony's going to make it tonight, and I don't know who uh, who all will be here. Hopefully, I look and sound good. Uh, Joe's asking about the microphone. Um, actually, <laughs> the funny thing is, this is like an old one. I've had this since. Dare I say college? <laughs> I actually don't remember when I got it. Um, it's been a while. And um, I was using this condenser microphone. And I think it was just too much. I think it was too noisy. Um, picked up way too much background noise, as condensers typically do. And so I figured, let's try the, just this uh, dynamic microphone. I'm not even sure the brand, honestly. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I'm using just a generic dynamic microphone going through a Roland Go Mixer Pro, and uh, hopefully it sounds good. And then, uh, for those who don't know, my camera is just a Logitech C920, so nothing special. I have a nice uh, light over here that I bought. Um, it was on sale one time. And then I have another light, a small light over here. So I have key, fill. I don't have a background light or hair light. I really need to get one. But we're building there slowly. All right, who else is here? Oh, Tommy's here from his wife's phone. Oh, I'm 90B lower. Okay, well, <laughs> oops. Um, they were actually not set anywhere close. So I guess I need to compare the dynamics of those two songs better. Uh, Joe asked, when are we upgrading to 4K? The answer is never. Uh, I think some of you probably know my stance on 4K. If you don't know my stance on 4K, unless you're doing the Super Bowl or a big sporting event, 4K is overkill. Uh, especially for YouTube, because most people are watching on these and these don't care if it's 480 yet alone 720 1080 4k so if your target audience is people on a large screen tv or at a theater well then 4k makes sense if you're anybody else and your viewership is on one of these a 480 or in this case a 720p stream which is all this is is plenty it's not about the resolution it's really not. So Joe asked, how about 1080p? I'll take 1080p. 1080p is fine because uh, 1080p has got both the best of both worlds. It's First of all, it's 1080 which versus you know 720 or 480, but it's not high enough where it's, oh my, you know, oh my God, nothing can touch it. Uh, the 1080p... Uh, in, these, in the broadcast world is great because it's progressive scan versus interlaced and uh, you really you really want the progressive scan for almost everything you do in terms of tele live television like sports so uh, they really combined 1080i and 720p and they made the best standard and most things are compatible with 1080p but once you jump to 4k it's you got to ha basically have a whole new plant or a whole new facility or in YouTube world, you know, you got to have different cameras or different gear, and it just doesn't make sense to me. I watch my phone with a magnifying glass in 4K. Because <laughs> of course you do, Joe. Why wouldn't you? Um. <laughs> Alrighty, so, um, so besides Joe and comment about 4K, I do have something to share with you tonight. Um, the newsroom project is 99.9% .9 done, if you have, if I, if I had to guess, you know. Um, and I actually have a picture I can share. 
So this is the newsroom project, or newsroom, I should say, that I've been working on forever. Um, this was a complete gut job and remodel. Um, this used to have literally carpet on the walls. The walls had carpet on them. All the carpet came down. Uh, where you see those lights on the left-hand side was a suspended ceiling. We removed the entire suspended ceiling. Um, and then we actually added offices on the left-hand side where that office is stuck, sticks out there. That was not there before. So we added uh, walls to make sure make more offices. That is actually a green room. Um, we also added a bunch of desks. We, we only had about 30, I think it was 33 desks before. Now we have like 44, I think. And so uh, they're all sit-stand desk, and, um, which is great, except for the inner ring. Those are not sit-stand, but those are uh, for reporters who basically will come in, edit their package or edit their video and go home or go back out in the field. So they're already moving around. Um, yes, Joe, uh, on that truss system where you see those wood brackets, there are now TVs. Um, there are eight TVs on the outside and four TVs on the inside. They're just uh, fed over the air television, so they only get the broadcast channels. We could, in theory, feed them cable if we wanted to. There's also internet up there, but don't tell anybody. <laughs> <laughs> so um so yeah so here's our newsroom like i said we added more desk of course what i love is that it's all new infrastructure um, every desk has two network jacks every row has cable tv and over the air tv fed to it so any desk can have a tv all the desks have dual monitor arms uh, so everybody can have two monitors. Most people have two monitors, but some people have one monitor and a TV so they can watch sports or other news channels. Um, so that's our newsroom project. Like I said, this is 99% done. Uh, the biggest thing I had, or biggest issue I think I actually had, was apparently for the network checks, uh, they're... I forget what they're called. They're the standard. But there's two versions. There's like a regular version and a slim version. And we apparently needed the slim version. And nobody knew that. Like we had to just try like different ones until we finally figured out that slim was the answer. Uh, so, <laughs> you know, who knew? Uh, Joe asked, oh, sorry. Let me cut back to here. Joe asks, will we do segments in the newsroom? Yes, uh, there's going to be eventually a actual uh, studio camera, like professional studio camera, on a tripod. Well, actually on a tripod and wheels. And we're going to have a newsroom position where reporters can go live from our newsroom uh, in at least probably two locations. Uh, we're even going to add a set in the corner. So there'll be like an actual setup with monitors. And so the newsroom camera will be able to, oops. The newsroom camera will be able to pivot like, or pan, I should say, and have a newsroom shot or pan this way and get a completely like set based shot. So um, that's pretty cool. We, we actually had that like back in the day, we kind of got rid of it. Um, then we had to use it because COVID, we had to use it as a green screen wall. So then it kind of became pigeonholed as basically a green screen camera. Well, now that's all gone and now we're back to a newsroom camera. So yes, that'll be a thing we'll be doing. Thank you, everybody is uh, excited. It is way better than before, so love that. Welcome, Bob. Uh, yeah, I actually planned, well, I, I didn't actually make the stream until about 35 minutes ago. <laughs> so maybe YouTube hasn't finished processing my stream, um, based on the fact that there's nobody else or not nobody, but you know, 
There's only three of you here, it looks like. Uh, maybe it didn't get out to everybody else. Um, but I'm glad that you're here, all of you. Uh, it looks like, according to this, there are six of you currently watching. And uh, as usual, there's only four likes, so hit the like button. I'm not, not saying as usual, I'm saying that, you know, the likes don't match the viewers. Oh, and I just refreshed. So now I have four viewers, four likes. So now we're batting a thousand. And I actually don't like baseball, so that's kind of a weird reference for me. <laughs> uh, okay, so wanted to talk about the newsroom. I did see a question... What did I where to go? Joe asked, how's the tower? So uh, if you didn't catch the short that I posted, uh, was that today's Monday? So that was Friday. Um, so Friday morning, I got a phone call that our transmitter building was about 87 degrees or so, 89 degrees. And that's crazy warm for a transmitter. And... I mean, it probably could handle, I mean, it was handling it, but that's not ideal. And so I went to the transmitter site and posted a little short video where I literally had the front door of the transmitter building open and an orange fan blowing like 20 degree outside air into the building in order to cool it down. And it did. It got down to about 64 degrees in there. Uh, so thank you, nature's cooling. Um, however, obviously we can't leave the front door open forever so i had to call the air conditioning company they came out um we have two units and both units were actually not working which you know redundancy is one thing i always talk about so we had two units and both units had died the one i believe is an oil pressure issue or a pump issue of some sort and i think one was electrical so he stole the electrical component off the bad unit and put it on or off the mechanical unit that was broken because of mechanical reasons and he made that part move over to the other one so uh the other unit basically has two issues now but the uh one unit works so we sacrificed one for the uh other one so we at least get back up and running and now the room is about 72 degrees which is normal and uh we're not going to overheat <laughs> so of course, that opened a whole nother can of worms because we found out that the monitoring software we installed years ago wasn't actually looking at the right transmitter site. Like, I don't know. It was just it was a little weird. And so it opened up a whole can of worms. The uh, DNS host name for the one unit was wrong. <laughs> so again, like just, it was a very interesting morning. So I posted a short. I don't think it's doing well in terms of views. I know some people have asked questions about like, um my youtube stats or youtube you know things and so um just curious what actually how is that short doing in terms of views only 29 views and four likes since january 27th which was friday so not a whole lot of views but you know interesting of course i didn't really add a description that's that matters i guess but um, one thing i did want to mention i know i had a comment on here someone asked a while ago if i changed out a thumbnail if it'd be better um so far that view is or that video um i changed the thumbnail and it did seem to improve uh the viewership it's still too early to tell but um if you're watching you know who you are so far, viewership's up, but we'll see. All right, so let's go back to the chat. <clears throat> How do you hit like on the Android mobile client? I don't know. <laughs> Um, so the burnt tower lights at the radio station, we just got approval to pay for that Friday. So I contacted the tower climbers and have asked for their availability. Hopefully I will have an answer here soon. But that'll be definitely a video 
uh, on the channel, not live, but it'll be a video. I will definitely shoot video if I can. Um, I'll shoot video either way, but I mean, I don't know if I'll be able to shoot video of the tower climbers themselves, but I will definitely shoot video and, and relay how that whole process went. But yeah, the tower's still out. Always test everything, like the X Files. And trust no IP. I never actually watched the X Files, so I don't know if I get that one. Yeah, I'm actually not a fan of shorts. Like, I don't. I just. It's like, what's the point? Um, I mean, I guess in a way I can understand why you would do it. I mean, obviously I posted one just to see how it would go, but. Yeah, I'm not a big fan. And people are, like, monetizing them. I don't understand how you monetize a short since it's, like, 15 seconds or less, typically. <laughs> but, hey, YouTube does, so go YouTube. Um, one thing I did want to share with you guys, since you guys probably would find this interesting, is a uh, video I just came across. I think I watched it before, but I could be wrong. Uh, it's a... Uh, podcast and so it's called sports in the making or sorry yeah sports in the making podcast and episode 13 which was posted five months ago uh is about the uh, engineering manager at game creek video um they're a huge uh production truck company i would probably say the um best or second best um in the country depending on who you ask sorry about that um i will post a video or a link real quick i also put it in notes so there's the link to this podcast i listened to it uh earlier it is uh, really cool. A lot of behind-the-scenes information about trucks and some history, uh, some war stories about uh, an incident that happened to him where the truck didn't show up until about an hour before the event, which I found fascinating. Uh, so uh, if you like the stuff that I produce, I would recommend you go check out at least this episode for sure. Uh, if not, the whole entire series. So uh, check that out. Again, I just posted it in the chat, and I will post it in the show notes, or the descrip description, I mean. So uh, anything else before we get to the meat and potatoes of the live stream? Let me check my notes. I did... Well, I did newsroom update, the podcast, so okay. Um, let me check out chat real quick one more time. YouTube's scared of TikTok. I mean, they probably are, but then again, isn't TikTok a Chinese thing? <laughs> um, oh, if the tree falls in the forest. <laughs> gotcha. Makes sense. Alrighty, so um, most of you probably know that I have been working on a church project on the side, and we actually have a situation where we need to push from an A10 Mini to a Raspberry Pi and then split that signal out three ways um, to a, in this case, well, <clears throat> We were going to use this, which is an ATEM streaming bridge, which, you know, I thought would work, except that when you go through another server, it obviously changes the way the encoding works, and this does not work. So uh, I actually had Tony, who's Quick Tech Solutions, uh, confirm, because <laughs> he, he set this up at his house, if you go through an Nginx relay server, this thing stops working. So that was kind of a bummer. So we're going to buy a new one for the church, and so that'll be one output and then of this relay server. The other output will be YouTube, and the third output will be uh, Facebook. So they can stream to one place internally, 
and then spread that out to three different places. However, Facebook requires that your RTMP stream be secure. So how do you secure what is originally an unencrypted stream? Well, you have to install a product that'll do that or some kind of wrapper, and that's what Stunnel is. So today I figured I would show you a live stream or demo of installing Nginx, adding the RTMP reflector, adding Stunnel to make it RTS, RTMPS, and then um, basically show you how to get that started, and then you can set up your own reflector service. So there's no need for Restream.io or any of those other reflector services you might pay for. Um, so let's get started. So this is a, oh, that's not the right server. <laughs> Oops. Oops, I actually didn't get that call up. So, sorry about this. I was, uh, 40. I was uh, on the way home and kind of had to do this a little bit last minute, so... Hopefully you guys can see that. Oops, let's make it a little bit bigger. There we go. So this is just a generic uh, Ubuntu install. Nothing has been installed besides, you know, the base version of Ubuntu. So the first thing we need to do is install the RTMP module. So we're going to do sudo app update just to make sure we have the latest packages. And then we're going to do a sudo apt install nginx rt mp, right? No, hold on. Hey, everybody, say hi to Haley in the chat. Uh, she decided she joined us. So, Haley is my wife, for those who don't know. Oh, it's it's this. So it's actually do, 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 do. sorry about this. So it's nginx with the RTMP module, and so you're gonna hit yes. Hopefully, you guys can see this. All right, so it installed. So now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to actually modify the Nginx config. So you can't actually see that. Oh, crap. Still can't see it. Oh, come on. I apparently have to move the terminal around. There we go. Now you should be able to see it. <clears throat> so we're going to we're going to modify the config by doing a nano. I prefer nano. I mean, people use vi, but I prefer nano. And then what I like to do is just come in here with the includes and we're going to add a second include. So we're going to just basically say, Hey, include the modules enabled configuration folder, but also include an RTMP configuration and save that and exit. Then we're going to make that file. So we're going to configure, we're going to, sorry, pseudo nano, the config file, 
that we just pointed to. And then we're going to copy and paste this little set of commands in here. And I'll explain what they are in a second. So here is what I just pasted. Basically, it's a special RTMP section that says to act as a server, listen on port 1935. The stream is got a chunk size of 4096. The application is live. So basically, you're going to stream to the server with a slash live. So that's what this application part does. Inside this application called live, we're going to turn live streaming on and turn recording off. Now, if you want to do stream to a unsecure location, you would just put push RTMP you know, youtube.com whatever streaming key, whatever you know you're given for your thing and make sure you end it with semicolon. And then this is the part that is kind of special for this installation. We're going to do a push RTMP to the local host on a different port. So up here we listened on 1935. Here we're going to listen, to, we're going to push to 1936. And then we're going to do RTMP. And in this case, this is where you'd put your Facebook key. Now, obviously, I'm not going to put my Facebook key, but you would put you would put your Facebook key uh, right here where it says FB key. Any questions so far on that? Let me look back at the chat. Uh, 303 North is just a local domain that I use. I do like Joe. I like your comment. Everything in Ch everything is a Chinese thing these days. <laughs> Alrighty, so oh, and Joe says he did this a couple years ago. All right, so we're gonna save that file and close out of it. And then we're going to uh, install Stunnel, which I know it's a weird thing to say, but and then we're going to copy and paste this whole command, which I will put in the notes. Oops, sorry, you have to obviously modify the config of Stunnel. And then you can paste this as is. There's nothing to modify here. And can you see that all? Nope. Yeah. So here basically we're defining, you know, the PID to use, the output log, um, some other information here is basically the application or the, uh, tunnel we're defining in this case, Facebook live, it is a client. It's going to accept on port 1936. So again, that's in the configuration where we just were, we pointed it to that, you know, that port, and then it's going to connect to the API live or sorry, live API S for facebook.com. And here's a, you know, secure port number. So Stunnel is going to wrap the RTMP that you're sending it in a secure connection and push it to facebook.com. Now you could have other applications in here. So I don't know if you want to do secure streaming and then do another client or whatever else you want to do. You can have multiple local streams. Just make sure you don't use the same port numbers. Otherwise, that would be confusing. 
And then what I like to do when you're all once you're all done with that is basically do a sudo system ctl nginx or sorry restart nginx and because it happened so fast i know it actually worked uh if it didn't work right you would have some errors or you'd have uh other things you know it'd be slow or whatever so and verify that it's actually working and there you can see that we are in fact running after we made those changes and uh, if you do same command I guess Thunder doesn't have a service channel either way uh, again these it's very basic uh, those commands I just posted will work uh, Tony confirmed that <laughs> he, he used the commands and the logic that I gave him basically and uh, he set up a test for me and he has it pushing uh, from an A10 mini to Nginx and then using Stunnel he has it going to Facebook, YouTube and a uh, local uh, RTMP decoder uh, in this case uh, it's actually an SRT compatible decoder but doesn't matter it does RTMP and so that's what we're going to be doing at the church here pretty soon in order to get our, you know, multiple outputs. And I think what I'm going to do is in the, to avoid just killing bandwidth, I'm going to basically have two different applications because we're not going to want to stream to YouTube and Facebook all the time, but we are going to want to stream to in house all the time. So I think what I'm going to do is, um, in the, in the config here where I have application, I'm basically going to have an application for internal use only and then basically have an application for uh, external live streaming. So depending upon the uh, stream key and basically whether or what, you know, if we send a RTMP slash live or we do an RTMP slash local, uh, it'll go to the right place and won't tie up their bandwidth. Not that bandwidth is a problem for them. And it, I didn't actually show you that because I was in the wrong source. Uh, <laughs> basically, I would just go down here and I would make another So I would do like application local and do the same thing. I can't type tonight. And then I would just push this to the So I would have two applications set up, one for going to YouTube and Facebook, then I'd have one that's simply local redirecting to the stream decoder, or I may even skip this and just have an op option inside the ATEM software to go right to the streaming decoder uh, so that I wouldn't need this second part here. Um, that's probably honestly way, a cleaner way of doing it, but you know we have options, and that's why I like setting up... Um, a local relay server so let me go back to the chat i see it's uh some questions there yeah so you you push to the server the server pushes it back to local on a different port that's how it gets into stunnel and then stunnel pushes it to the uh, facebook Ooh, that's a good question I don't know what version of TLS Tunnel supports. Let's find out. <laughs> or maybe you can tell it um, what version. So let's look.
maybe you could set an option. Uh, I don't know. This doesn't really look like a good answer. Oh, here's from the Stunnel website. Looks like you can uh, definitely set it to work on 1.2, so that should that should not be a problem. Uh, it looks like you can configure it uh, in the config file. So yeah, it'll support that. It looks like. Oops, I just closed out my browser tab. <laughs> um, so yeah, so it looks like it does support 1.2 uh, via configuration file. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, that's kind of what I was saying. I eventually got there. I know I'm behind. But yeah, you uh, you just set up just different, you know, a local only destination and then a live streaming destination and then you would just change your... Uh, source in the church we're actually going to be doing like a i want to say a powerpoint uh loop of slides and then they want to have music of some sort like a spotify playlist so the channel will always have content whether that's a powerpoint with music or live services so they'll have to go off the air if you will <laughs> off the air uh, for like, you know, three seconds while they stop streaming, switch the uh, destination, and then l let it up again. Um, that's not a big deal for them, uh, that they can easily do that. And yeah, well, through the uh, GUI, that's pretty easy, especially if there's only two options. <laughs> you know, like, either you go to internal or you go external. Um, that's pretty easy for them to figure out. Uh, the local, the recordings actually stay on the server. So uh, Nginx, you would, uh, whatever server that was sitting on, whether that's a Raspberry Pi or a virtual server, the recordings are on there. And uh, <laughs> I know this the hard way because <laughs> when I was testing it one time, I had recording on and recorded a whole entire like days worth of programming and was like, wow, this is cool. And then I forgot to turn that off. And then three days later, my server didn't work because <laughs> I ran out of hard drive space. So uh, if you do recording, be very careful. Have some sort of mechanism to clean that space up or whatever it is. I don't recall where the recordings live. I think it's a configuration file that you can basically tell it a folder. So you might be able to point it to a NAS or whatever. Uh, amount of drive if you will um, that's probably the best way to do it <laughs> set up point to some place where you have lots of storage space but just know that it's as long as it's getting a stream it'll be recording that stream so that may or may not be what you want so just keep that in mind could you host any of that off-site yeah i mean th this is just a um nginx and stunnel can you know on a ubuntu machine so any virtual server whether that's local or in the cloud um could totally do this and yes as your next your follow-up is yeah if your bandwidth is poor so yeah exactly you don't need to pay for restream.io or whatever it is uh, if you have a vps or a micro server from uh, amazon or whatever you could just do this and have it be your your own personal cloud relay upload the video once and then have the you know micro instance or vps break it out to your different services we are doing it local at the church because um we are streaming to a local device kind of like this and so we don't want to be going out to the cloud and back um and we definitely can't open firewall ports so um, we are doing it locally to avoid that um, need to come back in the building. Where in the server does recording save to? Um, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, it's just a setting in Nginx. 
Um... I really can't type tonight. <laughs> yeah, so you would just do... You would do a recording path, a record record path. So here you would just do... Oops, you guys can't see that yet. So it looks something like that, where you basically tell it to record on, and then you record path B, whatever you want to be, whether that's a mounted drive or um, a local drive. <clears throat> and I know that works. I did that before, like I said. Um, the other thing that uh, is basically one thing I like to do with... Uh, RTMP and the Nginx module is create an HLS stream. It's not so much, I mean, I use it for Roku stuff, or, but you know. And so you can actually come in here and do. Come on, my formatting's losing it. But basically, you can turn on HLS and then have um, Nginx create an HLS stream for you, too. Which, if you don't know, is uh, what things like Roku or, I believe, Apple TVs require um, is basically an HLS stream. So in this in this configuration, the RTMP server would be listening. It would be recording. It would be pushing to two different locations, and it'd be transcoding it to HLS. And the files would be stored in this directory right here. And then you could, if this was publicly available, there would be a M3U8 folder there or file there that then you could view with a device like an Apple TV or Roku or VLC or whatever it is. So, um, it, this thing will do HLS, uh, which is, I think is pretty cool. And that's actually kind of how I stumbled upon this was basically, um, oops. So um, I stumbled upon, upon that because I used to make Roku apps for people. Um, I did several churches. I actually made a Roku app for my station. It was never released, but I made it. And uh, in testing, because it only did HLS, I had to have some way to create HLS streams, live HLS streams. So I discovered that Nginx and RTMP does that uh, with the HLS on function. And so I made HLS streams and then my Roku apps for testing purposes could point to those and I could view them. And so, um, yeah, and Roku stream or making Roku apps is actually a lot of work. Uh, I wouldn't recommend it. I am not a programmer or developer. So therefore it was extremely hard for me to do, um, but I did it, uh, <laughs> for several things, but I kind of stopped it. It's just... Roku keeps changing all the specs. You've got to do things like deep linking, which means it's searchable and tie it in with their payment system. And it's just, it's a whole mess. Hold on guys. So, um, yeah, I mean, I used to be able to make Roku. I actually made Apple TV apps at one point. Um, I literally bought an Apple TV <laughs> just to test uh, the functionality of my app that I made. I made one app for one church. It worked. 
But again, they're constantly changing their uh, requirements, and I just I can't keep up with it. It's just it's too much. So Joe has more questions. Uh, there is you can in nginx you can send it uh ffmpeg commands so if you wanted to transcode like to different quality or different formats resolutions uh you can do that in hl or um, in nginx um aaron Parecki actually uh, did that on one of his streams recently where he had uh he had nginx uh point to ffmpeg and have like a blur function or something it's actually a pretty creative way to use uh nginx but basically he had it uh do a blur and then push out to a decoder so whatever video he sent got blurred by ffmpeg maybe even resized and then sent to a decoder uh so pretty powerful stuff there what you can do with nginx and rtmp um as far as I know, RTM, this RTMP module only works with Nginx. There's no Apache version of it. So um, I know some people probably like Apache for web servers, but I, I say we use what works. And our Nginx in this module cannot be any easier. So um, any other questions? Let's check our stats. Looks like we have uh, four concurrent viewers and seven likes. So I appreciate that. <laughs> I don't know the answer to that. <laughs> Although probably yes. Um, all right. So who else is here? Who? Anyone else still here? Bob, I think probably still here. Uh, yeah, you are. I saw you. I think Haley probably left a while ago. Um, oh, there's Haley. Speaking of, <laughs> hang on to what? The desk? The dog? Hang on to what? <laughs> oh, I suppose I mean, we could try. I actually, uh, I don't know if I'd know any of the commands to make that work. Oh, <laughs> Haley says it has eight likes now. Well, thank you, hon. I appreciate it. <laughs> Oh, there you go, Joe. <laughs> All right, it will do it live. That is the best. <laughs> uh, Bill O'Reilly, go look it up if you haven't seen that clip. Oh, you want to see Puka? Puka, come here. <laughs> she is not amused right now. <laughs> So this is our little dog, Puka. <laughs> Say hi, Pooks. Look here. <laughs> Puka was sleeping, so um <laughs> So that's our little dog. She's a 11. She's a Chihuahua pug. <laughs> it's what you do. Hit likes. <laughs> Joe says hi, pooks.
But yeah, so there's Puka. Hey, Tony. Welcome in. Glad you can make it. How was the movie? What movie did you watch? <laughs> well, that's a pretty big promise there, Joe. <laughs> Um, since Tony just got here, we'll show our uh, Nginx tunnel config. Uh, basically, uh, I modified Nginx to do live recording and HLS. <laughs> um, none of this, of course, is tested, but I know from experience that that would work since my other server that I'm not showing you is uh, currently doing all of that except for recording. <laughs> So I know uh, that these commands uh, and configuration files work. But Joe wanted to do live, or wanted to do uh, push to FFmpeg. So can I figure out how to do a push to FFmpeg? I think it's done with a, oh, hold on. Yeah, let me just verify something before I, <clears throat> I say it out loud because you're never more wrong on the internet <laughs> than when you say something out loud that's wrong. Um, t -t 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 where would that be? Alrighty, so it looks like that this would be the configuration. Oops. I just completely blew that up, didn't I? Yeah, okay. So it looks like we would basically, um, well, let's come in here and turn, just get rid of this stuff right now. So we would do, uh, this would be, So basically, you do uh, you would send this to FFmpeg input. You would have um, your source. And then you would have to uh, do whatever it is you want to do, like um, Kodak video copy or, you know, MP4 Kodak audio copy, I think is how it works. And then you would basically do a... Um, you'd basically do a push somewhere else so you would do like uh you would do a another send So here you would do, uh, basically you would you would do a command of ffmpeg. The input would be your local stream or your key. Yeah, how would that work? That wouldn't really work very well. You'd need to do. Something like that, maybe. Um, 
Actually, you'd probably have to do a different key. I don't. I mean, you could push it locally, but you could probably do like something like that. So you would stream to the server, and then on port 1937, for example, and then it would then convert the video to MP4, copy the audio over, and then push with this to wherever you wanted to go. You know, wherever.com converted so uh this would be a very basic example of how you could do an ffmpeg um push or conversion if you wanted to do it that way um so let's go back to chat and see what you guys are saying don't forget to like the stream tony already did that Joe saw it as it happened. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, Tony uh, was kind of my test case after I figured this out. I had, you know, he tried it out uh, for me when the uh, the ATEM streaming bridge didn't work for me. So he did the same thing on his. I Did you use your Synology NAS or what did you use as your host, Tony? I don't remember. Um... Yeah, so that's a good use case. Uh, as Joe says, FFmpeg is relevant because you might want to, you know, stream to one resolution to some platform and 1080 in a different platform. Uh, so yes, so this Nginx RTMP module with FFmpeg, with FFmpeg could do that as well. It could um, convert your stream from 1080 to 720 and wrap it in a secure shell if you will um to send to facebook so uh, you can basically daisy chain these commands together and achieve what you want uh if you have any questions please leave the comment down below after the stream i could probably help you with a configuration uh if you need a, a particular use case i'd love to hear it Uh, H2R graphics, latest release, pulls and comments from both platforms. Oh, so he, he tied it, he did some more social, uh, or API calls or something to make that work. <laughs> Sorry, I just got a private message. Uh, oh, a Ubuntu VM on Synology. So yeah, so this is Ubuntu VM on my virtualization server in the basement. Tony did it on a Synology. Works there too. We are officially at one hour. So, Joe, you are... Uh, there's your one hour. <laughs> uh, so let's, let's just do a recap real quick. Uh, we talked about... Uh, the newsroom, I think, Tony, you missed that. So let me go show you the newsroom. This was like a couple weeks ago picture, but it's the newsroom nonetheless. We talked about uh, a podcast that I think you all should go check out. Uh, where did that video, where did that go? So I think you should all go check out this podcast called Sports in the Making. It's all about trucks. And then we did our demo of uh, Nginx, RTMP, and Stunnel. And actually threw in some FFmpeg, thanks to Joe, <laughs> and some HLS. Uh, my thumbnail probably should be updated, but I'm not going to do that. Uh... Tony says the newsroom looks great. I think, yeah, Tony's been watching my Facebook photos, so he's seen more recent versions than that. But um, nonetheless, um, all right, any other questions? I hate to just go one hour and bail, but I did not sleep good last night, so I'm looking forward to going to bed. <laughs> um. Any last-minute questions about Nginx, 
or the newsroom or my current setup, which I get which I said earlier, is this cheap dynamic microphone and Go Mixer Pro and some nice lights, which definitely helps to improve um, the camera shot for sure because the C920 that I use obviously requires or likes more light than I was giving it before. Joe says, thanks for the stream, going an hour, and the new mic sounds better. Well, thank you for the uh, <laughs> audio interface to that it plugs into. Hey, Toro, thank you for joining. Um, I actually, uh, we're just wrapping up here, but uh, hopefully you can watch the replay if you're interested in NGINX and RTMP. I'm glad it sounds better. Like I said, I was using, I bought this uh, cheap, I mean, it was cheap, condenser microphone because at the radio station, we have several of those and they actually sound really good uh, with the microphone preamps that we use down there um, that are built into the Axia, um, oh, what it's called, what's it called? The Q, QRX? Yeah, QRX um, audio console. So these exact microphones sound great um, with my voice into those things. Um, I could actually show you what they are. It's the Axia QXR. That's probably the wrong thing. No, it's not. Here it is. So this is the audio console we use uh, at the radio station. And uh, those cheap condenser mics actually run into the, the brains of this thing and, and work great. So I thought I could mimic that here. Well, I don't, it didn't work. Um, the preamps obviously are better. And this is not exactly true. This is the broadcast console. I'm referring to the engine. Um, where is the engine? Um, oh, come on. Sorry, I don't know this website very well. I'm trying to find the engines. Oh, what's it called? Crap. Q-O-R, engine. So that's what the uh, engine looks like, <clears throat> the front and the back. So the microphones that I, the microphone I bought looked really, worked really well with that, but it does not work well with home gear apparently. So I decided to try a different solution, mainly for the uh, truck podcast or the live stream that I did two weeks ago, which is uh, hidden and will remain hidden until I can re-edit that because the YouTube editor sucks. <laughs> um, no, um, I just, uh, there's two bright lights in, me, in front of my face and I guess, um, I don't know. I don't know why it looks like that, but no, I didn't hit my head. Uh, the basement's kind of been on hold for a little bit. Uh, did some paint samples and I don't like any of the colors, <laughs> honestly. Uh, one's too dark, one's too light, one's the wrong shade. Cannot really find the good color that I like. Um, so I got to figure that color out first so we can paint the walls and then get the ceiling and then do the floor. Um, I actually brought some paint home uh, that's the same color as the newsroom. Uh, 
and it may or may not work. I didn't really like it at first, but now that I tried other colors, it does. I kind of like it better than the colors I chose. So, uh, still working on it, but we'll get back to that hopefully soon. I know Haley really wants it done, so need to get on that. I'm glad you're going to go back and watch it. I'd appreciate that, Toro. Uh, quick pull while we're here. Uh, for those who attended two weeks ago and the day, does 8 p.m. work better or does 9 p.m. Eastern work better for live streams? I feel like 8 p.m. had more viewership, but that could also be the fact that it was vMix. I don't really know if that's, you know, if the time made the difference or if the content made the difference. So I'm curious to know in the comments real quick before I leave, which time, which time slot do you prefer? 8 p.m. Eastern or 9 p.m. Eastern? Sorry, I'm getting private text messages. So Tony's going to go back and rewatch it. Joe says 9 p.m. Probably going to stick with 9 p.m. I was just curious if 8 p.m. worked better for some people. Um, so uh, speaking of live streams, um, next Thursday the 9th, is that what we agreed to, Tony? Yeah, next Thursday the 9th, I think it is. Um, I'm actually going to go live on Tony's channel. Um, do a Q&A session like he did with uh, Joe. What was that three weeks ago now? Four weeks ago? Uh, so we, hopefully if my schedule holds true, we'll, we'll do that. We'll go live next Thursday on Quick Tech Solutions, which I know all of you are subscribers of, so... We'll have, to, we'll have to drop that link. I know you're all already following him. Toro, you got distracted by a video game. <laughs> what video game? Not that I play games. I'm just curious. Tony says either time works for him. So, yeah, we'll probably keep it at 9 o'clock. Maybe that works better for me because... I don't always make it home on time, and like tonight I was really late, so 9 p.m. worked a lot better for me. Oh, Haley sent me another message, so. Alrighty. Some new roguelike. Never heard of that game. <laughs> uh, the last game I played was uh, Cities Skyline. Cities Skyline. Yeah, it was uh, on Steam for like 35 bucks, so I bought it. Um, at the time, I didn't have a machine capable of playing it. <laughs> so uh, I just checked it out again. That was like three years ago. So I just checked it out the other day on this machine that I have in front of me, and it plays it beautifully. So new machine works great because now the game's – actually, the game's like seven years old. I don't know why I said three. It's been like seven years. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, sorry about that. Um, so, I yeah, I played City Skylines. Um, before that, it was SimCity 2000. <laughs> and yes, there was a huge gap in there. Uh, I played Duke Nukem back in the day. Um, Red Alert back in the day. Um, I actually had a LAN party one time all about Red Alert and what else was popular back then? Um, not Dune. It was the war one. I forget what it was called. Uh, what was that called? Oh my god, I can't think of it. 
It was Red Alert era, so it was like 2000, 2001, maybe even 2002. Uh, it was a first-person shooter. It was really popular. I don't remember what it was called, though. <laughs> Haley's feeling better. Uh, definitely uh, the headache improved. Makes it sound better in terms of less annoying or... Because <laughs> I probably totally should have muted my microphone there. But because I came out of nowhere, I didn't have time. I need to find like a macro button. Um, or I need to get a stream deck, actually. That's what I need to do is get a stream deck. Uh, that would definitely help. Land parties are what got you into networking. Uh, that's cool. I was just in computers at that point. You know, I was got my first computer when I was probably oh god, was that ninety seven, ninety six, maybe. <laughs> um, got a computer. It was a Packard Bell. 133 was the megahertz uh windows 3.1 upgraded to 95 upgraded to 98 blew up windows 98 several times my brother-in-law uh had to reinstall it after the second or third time he said enough is enough you figure out you learn how to do this so i figured out how to install windows myself i then Got a tangent? Tandy? No. Oh god, what was it? Had a T in it. It was it was beige. Um and it didn't have a CD ROM drive. But I figured out how to install Windows 98 on it by putting the files on a hard drive and putting that hard drive in the machine. It was boy, it was it was weird, but it was like a tangent. I forget what it's called. And I networked them together. So I had the Packard Bell, my parents' computer, and then I had my own computer in my room, networked, and they shared a 56K modem. <laughs> it might have been Toshiba. It was, it, was, it was something with a T. And the schools were getting rid of them already. And so I managed to get one. Um... Probably illegal at the time, but they were thrown away. So um, maybe it was Toshiba. I forget. But uh, so, yeah. So Packard Bell, my own computer. We did network connection sharing on a 56K modem. <laughs> and then I built my own PC finally. Um, and then went off to college. And in college, or right before college, we went to, we started doing LAN parties once I built my own PC. And we did LAN parties at uh, my friends, uh, Jeremy, Brian. We went to the, their friend's house. And then finally we went to a school where the kid, his kids, the kid's mom was a teacher at a school. And we filled the school gym. I mean, it was probably 100 kids if not more. And I remember the kid had access to three com network switches. And we all thought that was cool because we had never seen, like we had switches at work or school, but we had never seen someone actually have a switch like at home. And uh, yes, internet connection sharing with a modem is less than desirable for sure. <laughs> Um, so we had three comm switches at a LAN party with like a hundred kids. That was the biggest LAN party I've ever been to. We did it once. It was at a school at a gym. Uh, and then we had a couple of LAN parties here and there. My friend and I moved into an apartment complex or an apartment, I should say, and got a cable modem and... Boy, the internet definitely changes when you have a cable modem. <laughs> Went from dial-up to cable modem. It was great. And then um, that didn't work out, so I moved back home. 
and insisted a cable modem. My parents were like, we don't need cable modem. We, we're good with dial-up. And I'm like, no, you need a cable modem. So we bought a cable modem. My dad saw what live radar was for the first time, like live weather radar, and just absolutely loved it. And um, <laughs> so then we had high speed at home. Um, obviously, no longer had the Packard Bell. I think they had a gateway PC. Yeah, it was a gateway PC because um, they actually had a gateway store um, nearby. And so we went to the gateway store one day and bought a PC. And then I bought network cards off my friend <laughs> he had bought like 20 d-link network cards on ebay and was selling them for like 200 percent markup but i needed network cards and i didn't want to buy two off ebay myself so i bought them off of him and um yeah So that was a little road down. That was a little trip down nostalgia lane. Um, <laughs> uh, it was not Quake Three. I just don't remember what it was called. I want to say like Counter Strike. No. Oh boy, and I'm gonna have to go look it up. What was that called? What was the it was like a military thing? It was um like two thousand one, two thousand two. Was it Counter Strike? Yeah, actually, I think, it, I think it was Counter Strike. Now that I'm now that I'm saying it out loud, yeah, it was Counter Strike. It was Counter Strike. Oh, sorry, I did that again. Yeah, it was Counter Strike. Um, we played Counter Strike. Well, they played Counter Strike. I played and lost over and over again. I'm not very good at first person shooters. Um We played we played Red Alert a lot and uh, I got killed in that one too. <laughs> Command and Conquer. Um not very good at games, <laughs> so that's why I play uh Sim City or Cities Skylines because <laughs> um otherwise I get killed fast. Um <laughs> Uh, the one interesting story I remember from a LAN party was we were doing PC upgrades because, of course, LAN parties, people always often, like, buy new stuff or will trade gear for, you know, whatever it is. So I remember I was doing some of my, some with my PC, and I had the hard drive just sitting on top of the PC like this. And for some reason, I grabbed it and did this while it was on and then <laughs> like the, the world's second worst smelling smell came just instantly everyone's like what is on what's that smell what's that smell and uh i realized my computer was no longer running and <laughs> so i grabbed the hard drive that i just flipped over and it was hot as hell and i unplugged it and at the friend's house where we were, we were in like the kitchen and they had a front porch and I remember opening the door and throwing the thing out the front window or the front door into like this porch area because it was winter time. So like logically I'm thinking, cool, this thing's hot, throw the thing outside. Um, and so <laughs> we threw the hard drive outside, just killed the hard drive. I, I don't know if that's a, a platter crash or what that would be what I would actually did. But all I know is that it was hot. It smelled and my computer no longer worked, <laughs> which of course at a land party is not fun because now you're basically dead in the water. So we didn't really do anything else. I couldn't do anything else after that because my computer was dead. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so, My first PC was a gateway. North in the name. Computer company with North in the name. Computer company with North.
The only thing I see is North Star, but I don't know if that's the right one, Tony. But, um, yeah, it was, uh, I had Gateways, I had a Packard Bell, I had the Toshiba or Tangent, whatever it was called. Um, I had a Gateway laptop with Windows ME. <laughs> uh, that was an interesting little thing there. Um, actually, I got my laptop for going to college. Um, I built my computer. It was an Antex. I remember it was an Antex case. I want to say, was it Asus motherboard? I'm pretty sure it was a uh, back then. Um, yeah, eight player StarCraft. I don't, I don't know if I know StarCraft. I don't think I've ever. I don't. I definitely don't know that one. Well, it wasn't the temperature difference. It was basically the fact that it was sitting like this, and I flipped it over while it was on. So I think it was definitely mechanical, like head hit the platter or the platters, like, you know, because it was it was sitting like this. And I remember just kind of, like I was going to do something on the computer, and it was on. So I said, okay, well, flip the, flip the hard drive over. Let me get access to the motherboard. And then that's when the smell happened. <laughs> so there's the, the act of... Flipping it over definitely is what caused the um, the whole thing to start. And then it was hot, and then I threw it outside. So um, then it got cold. <laughs> oh, Northgate Computers. Never heard of them. But that doesn't mean anything. I've just never heard of them. Alrighty, well, I think I'm going to wrap this up. I'm going to tear down um, lights and mic stands and stuff. So uh, I thank you all for joining. I uh, truly do appreciate it. Uh, I, the stream has 10 likes according to YouTube, so that's awesome. I appreciate you all being there. Uh, I don't have a topic for next Monday, so if you have one, uh, send it my way. The VMix thing was very popular. I'm considering doing it again, or at least doing something like that again. Uh, not quite sure what I could do, but if you have ideas, please let me know. Um, and I thank you all for watching, so I hope you all have a good night.